Hi, I'm Barbara Don Diego, CEO of Avoxy. I'm so excited to share with you some thoughts I have about what I really think is going to be happening as we head into 2026. You know, 2025 has been a really exciting year for all of us in the CX industry. Um, with the advent of AI, so much has changed in just one year's time. So now, as we're thinking about 2026, what else is going to happen to our overall customer experience and to all the contact centers around the world? We have a few thoughts here at Avoxy of how that might go. Our first thought is that, you know, the move to the cloud is just going to continue. As clients are uh, getting more and more efficiencies and they're having more demands on their overall experience, that's going to just that's going to necessitate a further move to the cloud overall. So we just see that more move to the cloud um, and, and really at an accelerated pace, particularly outside of the United States. The second thing we really see is uh, as folks are moving to the cloud with the voice channel, really starting to consolidate all these legacy voice providers into a true software platform provider like an Avoxy. So instead of having all this legacy physical voice, you're gonna, as you're moving that to the cloud, you really need a platform, a software platform to integrate that into and to manage that for you and to really bring all those disparate parts together into one place. So we see a lot of consolidation happening across the voice channel. And then third is really, as we go into AI, everybody's working on AI, we really see AI infrastructure becoming a priority particularly for the voice channel. And we really see a rise of the voice channel as we head into more AI-driven applications and AI-driven experiences. So the cost for a phone call, traditionally in a contact center, is about 80 plus percent the human cost or the agent cost. So now with AI, with machines answering calls, machines helping people answer calls, or even people answering, answering the calls, all that is actually bringing down the overall cost per call. And that's allowing our clients to really ungate that voice call to be able to use it, not, not worry that it's really expensive, it's going to be a lower cost. They're going to be able to now use that to best solve the customer's problem. And we're super excited about seeing that increase in AI and also increase in reprioritization of use of voice around the world. So those are our three predictions for 2026. One, continued move to the cloud, um, even at a more accelerated pace. Two, as you're moving to the cloud, particularly with the voice channel, consolidation of infrastructure and all those legacy providers into a software platform like a boxy. And three, with the rise of AI, really starting to ungate that voice channel and allow uh, customers to communicate with, with companies in the way that's best gonna solve their problem in the most delightful way. So those are the three we have for 2026. We'll see how we do on those and how accurate we are. And we hope everybody has a great end of year and a great start to the next year. Hi, everybody. My name is Zach Edwards. I'm a senior threat analyst at Silent Push, and I'm here today to talk through some of our predictions for 2026. And first off, really, this is going to be another year of APT threats. At this point, no one needs to be or should be victim zero in attack. And so we are strong believers that um, indicators of future attacks instead of IOCs is really baseline defensive work. Um, and for us, tracking what is malicious in real time as it's being spun up means that we're going to have our hands on bulletproof hosts. And we are seeing dramatic changes here. We need more efforts from law enforcement, from government to try and hold these BPH operators accountable. And we need more of the upstream providers, which keep them online, facing attention, facing some heat for how they're facilitating these uh, malicious hosts and keeping their malicious clients well websites online. Further into this space, we've classified a new type of bulletproof host as infrastructure laundering. And this concept basically was created to describe the funnel CDN. When the U.S. Treasury sanctioned them earlier this year, an FBI essentially came out and said that this network has been hosting the majority of investment scam websites targeting individuals in the U.S. And there's been over $200 million in losses from just this one Chinese content delivery network. And there's a lot of challenges for defenders to, to actually get this infrastructure offline. And so this new concept of using someone else's IPs as part of your bulletproof hosting network and using credible IPs at that is, is really a new challenge for defenders. 
And then on these bulletproof hosts and, and across these malicious campaigns, we are seeing tons and tons of drive-by download campaigns. Sock Golish and the threat actors that are part of that ecosystem continue to scale up their campaigns, promote info stealer downloads, and these are having a lot of impacts both on individuals but also corporate targets because when an individual is compromised by an info stealer or they accidentally – they think that maybe there's a, a browser download that they need to get and they accidentally download some malware – when those execute and the data is acquired from people's devices, it's not only personal data and credentials that are stolen, it's also corporate credentials. And a lot of these are used in follow-on ransomware attacks. And then basically in these ransomware attacks, even further tooling is used from open source red team tools to, to other niche tooling. And, and really folks need to be aware of all of these different methods and tools and have indicators of future attacks, proactive methods to be identifying that type of infrastructure as it comes online. So you're not waiting for that infrastructure to attack your users. W what we're really seeing on the ground are threat actors love AI website builders. They're using AI website builders to age their domains, create thousands of domains that they sit there and eventually launch malvertising attacks in and, and other campaigns. They love them for creating English language documents, creating more credible phishing lures. We're absolutely seeing North Korean threat actors with AI video, AI audio lures, and really taking advantage of the ability to, to create multilingual attacks where you don't have to be a native speaker in a specific language. Right now, defenders should be focused on what are the actual ways that threat actors are using AI today across their infrastructure and, and really focusing on AI website builders and that scaled up content that, that's helping them to create those. So in 2026, we hope to see lots more actions from defenders, lots more government um, indictments, sanctions, arrests, and defenders really going as much as they can on the left side of boom, really trying to get the uh, proactive defenses in place, creating those indicators of future attack feeds by looking at the fingerprints, threat actors, and toolings as they're deployed and creating tools to track that before it's used in an attack, before there's a victim from one of those campaigns. And so that really will be and should be the focus of most organizations. And, and we appreciate and look forward to supporting folks who are on that same mission. Uh, thank you, everyone, and good luck with your, your work in 2026. My name is Maury Haber. I'm the Chief Security Advisor for Beyond Trust, and as a part of my role, I am tasked with anticipating the future for cybersecurity and trends that may impact the industry. For 2026, I have the following three predictions. The first is taxation with a digital identity representation. The internet is going to get a border tax. Governments around the world will consider implementing a tax or tariff on digital services that are produced, distributed, hosted and supported outside of their own geographical borders. We have already seen this with some indications impacting movie studios and believe governments around the world will take advantage of this new revenue stream. My second prediction is around the identity and access reckoning. In the next year, we'll witness a ramp up of attack vectors poising consumer and business accounts as threat actors find novel ways to insert fraudulent billers and payers or worse, modifying existing ones. These threat actors will process funds via third-party brokers and link them to the transactions that we pay every single day. Finally, we're gonna see technology go organic. It's gonna be the birth of organic computers. The next five years will usher in the rapid progression of biological computers as they push through the limitations of silicone, GPUs, and near absolute temperatures required for quantum computing. These organic computers need to be watched, and it's more than just science fiction. They'll be used in novel ways that we've not even anticipated today. I'm David Cottingham, president of RF Ideas. My prediction for 2026, we will continue to see cybersecurity threats evolve. A lot of companies have done the check the box phishing training. We've taught our staff to look for 
poorly written messages, for grammatical errors. That's not going to cut it anymore. AI is going to allow attackers to create even more convincing messages than ever before. One of the ways that we can help protect against that phishing attempt is validating who is authenticating into that system. So that starts with secure credentials and it moves into the ability to authenticate the holder of that secure credential with technologies such as biometric unlocking of an NFC wallet. So then you can have who is holding that device at the moment that they authenticate into the application. It gives you protection against a compromised credential and also validates the holder of that credential. I'm uh, Luigi Lenguito, the founder of Before AI, the company behind pre-crime and pre preemptive security. I think 2026 will be the year of preemptive security. We, this has been in the making for the next three, four years, the transition away from detection and response into a more active defense. I think it's very interesting to see some of the indication, if you want, that you know this change and evolution of the industry is happening. Uh, very recently, the World Economic Forum released the first report from the Partnership Against the Cybercrime, talking about a framework on how all the organizations, both public and private and governments, should focus on not just responding to cybercrime, but really looking into disrupting cybercrime. Of course, if you want to disrupt, Cybercrime, you need to be informed about what that future attack will be. So it really resonates with me because it's the whole logic why we created Before AI on the, on the, at the start, right? So predicting the future, disrupting it, taking it down before the attack happens. But also, you know, very interesting to see, you know, recent events organized by a Global Anti-Scam Alliance, Global Cybersecurity Association, European Cybersecurity Association, CISA, in which we hear how the old model of detection and response reactive is being overwhelmed by the you know, ease of access to cybercrime that technology like AI has brought to bear, the volume of attack that is growing because you know, all these script kiddies, kiddies are, are getting access to, to this tooling, and the variety of the attack that is growing as well. So long story short, too fast, too much of it, human beings are overwhelmed, detection response too late, how you solve it. And it's really this move to do it left to boom before the attack happen. Uh, you know, in our case, it's obviously all about predicting and then preempting through the disruption and takedown capabilities. Uh, and, you know, aside us professing this, uh, uh, you know, this, this concept, we're seeing more and more companies getting into this market using, you know, this terminology. Uh, and I think in general, you know, a realization that you want to be an actor of your defense and not not a victim of the cybercrime uh you know actors <music>